What's up guys? It's Steve Cardenas, aka Rocky the Red Power Ranger, and you are watching Smart Tank Revolution. Alright, how you guys doing? Welcome back to the Smart Tank Revolution where we always, and I mean always, kick out at two. I am your host for this segment, the benevolent, intelligent Mr. Donnie Wonderful. And we are going to travel along the reading rainbow. And I'm wondering if anyone that happens to be listening to this, born after 1995, even knows what that is. If not, Google it. I will also mention, since I'm at uh, my corporate chambers, as a matter of fact, how much I love you guys. I'm not taking any calls until this is done. So you don't have to question my devotion. And by the way, I'll be sipping the unofficial drink here that I call the Donald Palmer. That is. Yeah, there you go. Just strawberry infused water, ladies and gentlemen. But nevertheless, this thing looks phenomenal. Take a first sip on me. Nutritious and delicious. Now, while we're here, <clears throat> powered on the work laptop and, um, you know, have to access the internet. I have to. It's part of the job. You know, got to access um, a plethora of databases that requires me to be online. And, um, yeah. So when I open it, I don't have, um, I don't have Google as the as the saved engine. <laughs> it still goes right into Microsoft Start, which is Bing. But what caught my eye, and damn it, this algorithm knows how to catch my eye. Said was an article, um, story written by Ishan Ravi. I think I read something of his on this channel before. The 10 best wrestling heels ever, according to Ranker.com. And the picture that they show is the picture that I've, that I've used for the thumbnail. I haven't made it yet, but that's likely what I'm going to do for the thumbnail. And I said, oh, it's a five-minute read. Why not? Why not plug on this microphone? Why not be fully immersed in insubordination to give our loyal supporters and subscribers some content to listen to while you're going to sleep on the ride home, whatever you're doing. So one thing you should do is don't forget to like this video and accept our invitation to subscribe to this beautiful channel if you already haven't subscribed. We thank you in advance. So <clears throat> that being said, the 10 best wrestling heels ever. The obviously, you know, Mr. McMahon, I believe, will always and should be number one. You don't get no that. Uh, but in the same token, um, Eric Bischoff was that in WCW as well, the heel boss. I think um, ninety percent of us can relate, I, 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 unless you are the sole proprietor. And I hope that. Most of us aren't the Mr. McMahons and Eric Bischoffs or that 10%. Uh, <laughs> I hope I hope that we're all good bosses and not horrible bosses. But um, I'm pretty sure that most of us can relate to wanting to punch a boss in the face. Or, uh, damn, I shouldn't have said that. YouTube doesn't like that. So most of us can subscribe to the, to the feeling of wanting to give our boss a stone cold stunner. You know, fair use. <laughs> so... I think that that works. Um, Chris Jericho is on here, and so is Edge, which I do agree with, too. Uh, before we get to this list, I do want to mention that um, I the, the names that come to mind are guys who spend most of their careers as heels and haven't switched back and forth. So, I mean, at first I thought, well, Randy Savage would have to be on here because his reign as his run, rather, as the Macho King and his reign, I, Intercontinental title reign was was nothing short of a, of, of a Dave Meltzer 17,000 star classic run. But Ted DiBiase should definitely be on here. 
Uh, Raven should be on here. Uh, the franchise, Shane Douglas, should be on here. And uh, you know what? I'm going to stop right there because I have a feeling that um, I'm way off and I shouldn't be. But let's see. So let's go down this list real quick. Uh, once again, the 10 best wrestling heels ever, according to the ranker.com story by Ishan Rather. I will provide the link in the uh, description box. And it has a quote. WWE Hall of Famer Scott Hall once said, hard work pays off, dreams come true. Bad times don't last, but bad guys do. Let's look at some of the that, uh, let's look at some of the bad guys who may be dubbed as the greatest heels of all time. I love that opener. I love that opener. And the reason why I'm going to go into more of these is because I want to know if it's going to give us some uh, insight on how what the criteria was for ranking them. In order for any WWE rivalry, okay, so we're going to stay WWE, I'm assuming. In order for any WWE rivalry to succeed, there must be an equal amount of love and hate from the WWE universe. Face characters motivate and engage the fans, while heel characters typically work to make sure nobody loves them. While every successful babyface wants to win over the crowd, every great heel will find success generating heat from the live audience. Okay. In many instances, the work of heel characters turn out to be so good that fans despise them. The pro wrestling industry has had numerous heels whose immense characters have been hated by fans. Without further ado, here's a look at the top heels in WWE history as per Ranker.com. Sorry for the pause. I wanted to make sure I scrolled down enough to not reveal who number 10 was. So with that criteria being said, I'm wondering... Um, Hmm. You know, I'm wondering if, man, I had somebody in mind. I had somebody in mind. So would Stone Cold Steve Austin work here? Uh, a heel, you, know, you guys remember, or most of us should remember, a heel that was so bad he was cool, you know? Um, really, really the turn point. And, and by the way, Anytime you can turn fans against Bret Hart, that, that has to be worth something. He has to be on this list. But let's see who number 10 was. And, and um, I may or may not read uh, some of the descriptions, but let's go down here. Number 10. Ooh, Bobby the Brain Heenan. Okay. That's a, that's a game changer for me because managers... Now we're now we've broadened the scope here. This is what I'm talking about. This is actually really good. I have to read this one. Okay, Bobby the Brain Heenan at number ten. <clears throat> While professional superstars play a major role to attract fans, their managers oftentimes turn out to be the backbone of the characters. It's true. The late great Bobby the Brain Heenan proved that a storyline isn't enough to engage fans in a superstar's character. Living all his life with withdrawing adverse reactions from audiences, Heenan made sure that fans hated his clients. That is very true. That is absolutely very true. I don't, I don't mind that at all. Um, now I'm trying to think. Uh, you can definitely throw um, sensational Sherry in here if if we're including managers, and and we can just. This whole list can be managers. I know you have to add some wrestlers in here. But uh, if Bobby the Brain Heenan is number 10, Jerry Lawler has to fall in here at some point. His 90s run, just as just as a, as, as a heel on WWF TV and being a baby face back in his territory of Memphis, like that alone can carry him to be at least top five here. But okay. Let's see who's number, oh, number nine. Okay, they go with another, yet another manager. Paul Heyman is number nine. And, um, you know, the descriptions, they're not that long. They're little two paragraphs, but I'll, I'll just read the first one for each. Again, the description for this, hopefully I remember to put it in, uh, will be in the description, uh, description box here. Okay, Paul Heyman at number nine. 
Paul Heyman is known for his incredible mic skills and has been a manager and has been a manager to some of the most prominent stars in the pro wrestling industry. After working alongside superstars like CM Punk and Brock Lesnar, it's clear to see that their careers wouldn't have been the same without Paul Heyman. The latter has helped many of his clients suck the negative energy out of fans, making his own on-screen character one to abhor or admire. Okay, so wait, I want to go back to see when this was written, because if you're going to say that, you don't dare leave out our tribal chief. So this was 11 months ago, okay. Did they mention Roman? Oh, never mind. Sorry, sorry, I jumped the gun. I'm gonna read all of Paul Heyman here. His this the this next um the paragraph is a short three sentence. His current run along with Roman Reigns is dubbed as some of his best work. And I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm just gonna leave it there. Is that's true? At the number eight spot, we got Ted DiBiase. I expected to see him here. The Million Dollar Man was an immense heel character that many fans detested. Being one of the greatest minds in the wrestling industry, DiBiase, one way or the other, made sure he was treated like a king, using his money to do everything. The Million Dollar Man was despised by all who were jealous of his wealth or disgusted by his villainous ways. I love that. I absolutely love that. Do you guys remember... Um, his brief baby face turn in WCW when he saw the light. I forget. I can't remember what he said. Um, and I wanted to like it, but I said, come on, man. You're, you're, you're Ted DiBiase. Even though he wasn't even a million dollar man there, you know, this is, you're, you're still like the symbol of opulence and affluence in my eyes. And everybody has a price, which now that I think of it, remember those jobbers he was beating? And, you know, the Million Dollar Dream, oh, I, I just love that finisher name. The Million Dollar Dream put you to sleep, and he puts that C note in the mouth. Was that their payoff? Somebody let me know in the comments. I've never actually double-checked that, but I'm pretty sure that was their payoff. And then, of course, I mean, you got to hate the kid. Uh, dribble the basketball 10 times and then kicks it out kicks it out the, his hands. That's one of the funniest videos, videos in the world. One of the funniest promos ever done. And shout out to Virgil, uh, Meat Sauce Madness, my Virginia Union University brother who passed away recently. All uh, right, so number eight, Ted, Ted DiBiase. Number seven, Edge. Not mad at this. Not mad at his placement here. Obviously, he's on the um, the front cover, so Edge would have to be here. Though his current run hasn't seen a lot of heel work, Pre-retirement Edge was one of the top heels in pro in the pro wrestling business. The rated R superstar has earned a lot of hatred for his actions in and out of the ring, and the versatility in him made him break barriers to come out to the top of the industry. I agree with that. I agree with that. But now, now I'm I'm starting to get a little nervous about uh, Sensational Sherry, who should definitely be on here. There needs to be a woman on here. There absolutely needs to be a woman on air. And who, I'm trying to think, uh, who would be better than Sherry? Oh, man. I, you know, you can go Flair. You can do all, all those guys. But I'm telling you, sensational Sherry needs to be on here. Raven needs to be on here. They need to. But I, I guess by having Paul Heyman as number nine, um, yeah, eight. Hey. You know what? Paul Heyman should have been number 10, technically. I mean, I know Bobby Heenan wasn't taking bumps for real because of his neck surgery, but or, or, or injury, rather. But Paul Heyman wasn't taking none of that. But I love him. We love him. All right, let me see. So I forgot what number we're at. So Bobby the Brain Heenan was 10. Paul Heyman was 9. Ted DiBiase, 7. Edge is 6. Ah! Right? Let's get one. I think that's a good one. 10, 9, 8, 7. At number 6. And I had to double check because I can't believe he's this. This is kind of low. So Rowdy Roddy Piper is number 6. Huh. Having tremendous mic skills, Roddy Piper's character work is still fondly remembered today. With the mic in hand, Hot Rod left no stone unturned to make millions around the world hate him. His talk show, Piper's Pit, 
paved the way for some of the greatest rivalries in the industry, and he became one of the most popular stars very early. Huh. Um, you know, I guess to rival that, he was a great heel, just like he was a great face. But by the time I was old enough to truly become familiar with him, he had already been a babyface and been in movies. And I had to go back to and do some research with other um, tape swappers to actually see his heel stuff. And I took it and can take it at face value because as good as he was on the mic as a, as a baby face, he was that as a heel. Yeah. Okay. Number six. All right. Number five, Chris Jericho. Okay. Before making his way into AEW, Chris Jericho made sure WWE fans don't like him. Having tremendous in-ring capabilities, Jericho knew how to defeat fan favorites, which made him the bad guy for many years. As a heel, he's defeated top stars like The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Shawn Michaels. I'm going to have to read this second, second uh, brief uh, paragraph. Hopefully it can um, reel me in even more. His mic work and in-ring performances not only made people hate him, but he also helped his opponents earn fame and become even more popular as fan favorites. Jericho has worked with a lot of popular names in the ring throughout his career and has always known how to make his character intense. He is a man of many masks. <laughs> I will give him that. Metamorphic Chris Jericho. The metamorphosis. He's, you know, he should, that, should, that should also be another one of his monikers. Uh, I definitely do give him his credit. Um, ranking him over Roddy Piper. Mm. Okay, I, you know, we'll be fair. What is that, five? <laughs> Number four, Triple H. Oh, this, this had to be here. The current creative head of WWE has had an illustrious career, being the heel that fans couldn't stop talking about. The game has proved its worth as one of the top superstars in the wrestling business. <clears throat> Excuse me. With his tremendous in-ring performances and character development skills, the 14-time world champion has demonstrated himself as one of the most versatile superstars in history. Okay. I really don't need to go into the second paragraph with this. Uh, Triple H was always that perfect heel for the face of the company. And I think even um, even if you go, even, even if you put him in another, uh, even if you put him in his prime in another, in another, um, in another decade, you know, just WWE, WWF at the time, whatever. So Triple H and, and Prime Hulk Hogan, I think, could have um, tore the house down. You know, like 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 Triple H is always the that great uh, Lex Luthor type of um, heel, and 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 his Intercontinental Title run too in the late nineties was really good, really 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 good. So I, I have I have no quarrels here with him being number four. All right, number three, Randy Orton. Very surprising. Not many, not many like the young Randy Orton. His feuds with the likes of The Undertaker and Mick Foley turned him into a bona fide superstar. Those rivalries helped showcase his immense heel work, leading to intense fan hatred for Orton. The Viper over the years has made his name for his shocking betrayals. His legend killer persona has made fans despise him as well as revere him. I don't agree with Randy Orton being ranked over Triple H, Roddy Piper, Paul Heyman, or anybody on this list, actually. But I do give Randy Orton a lot of credit, again, for being as metamorphic as Chris Jericho is. Because there's not... I don't think... Um, there's a version of Randy Orton that okay let's let me clean this up a little bit post SummerSlam 2004 his first title run there's not a version of Randy Orton that we all don't like 
or and I'm, I know I understand that I'm speaking for us all, but let me know in the comments. I, I do, but I love seeing Randy Orton now, you know, and I and I also did that. But I, I again, like I have a problem with Sensational Sherry not being here. If 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 you started off with Bobby the Brain Heenan and you make a compelling argument why he's number ten or why he's there, or maybe this just isn't in in order. Because they don't have numbers beside them. I'm just calling them out because, you know, you got to scroll down and see which was which. But they didn't number them. It's just trying to keep me on pace. But, you know, I don't know, man. Like, I agree. Okay, so, like, I don't, I, I wouldn't mind this if this was over the, over the last two decades, which he absolutely deserves it. But when you start off with Bobby Heenan, come on, man. You started off with Bobby Heenan. Scary Sherry, sensational Sherry. She better be on this list. God, who is number two? Damn it. Number two, Ric Flair. Like, see, he went, they they went, I don't know. They went with the safe bet. They went with the safe bet. I don't even have to read this. He's the nature boy. I get it. I will not read this as I get ready to read. The Nature Boy is one of the most natural in-ring performers of all time. I'm just going to leave it at that. We know this. Number two, Ric Flair. Like, that's the safe one. That's the safe one. And he deserves to be here. He has every right to be here. Every right to be here. But, I mean, now, okay, number one, obviously, who had the biggest picture in the collage that they made was Vince McMahon. So let's see it. Vince McMahon. And, um, well, <laughs> I'm not going to go into Vince McMahon. You know, Vince McMahon got enough stuff going on. But, all right, but, like, okay, just real quick. Three hash. Bobby the Brain Heenan, number 10. Paul Heyman, number 9. Ted DiBiase, number 8. Edge, number 7. Roddy Piper, number 6. Chris Jericho, number five, Triple H, number four, Randy Orton, number three, Ric Flair, number two, Vince McMahon, number one. I, mm, I was about to say, I don't mind most of it, but I think we can, somebody would have to catch the ax here because Raven definitely deserves to be here. He's one of the all-time greatest heels. Raven deserves to be here. If not, Raven Sensational Sherry deserves to be here. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Again, this article is called The 10 Best Wrestling Heels Ever, according to Ranker.com. Do you agree? Who would you add? Who would you take off? Or better yet, let us know in the comments section, right? Let's expand this list to 20. Give me, give us all 10 more. Along with the other, the other um, uh, challenges I, I I pose, who would you take off? Who would you add? So on and so forth. How would you re-rank them? Let us know at Smart Tank Revolution. Thank you guys for listening. If you made it this far, again, please like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed, and we'll see you on the next one.